Thanks a lot, Ray. Appreciate that. Um, so my name is Sunita Jiwan. I'm a veterinary inspector working for the Department um, of Agriculture. And I'm going to talk you through the customer journey involved in bringing in um, products of animal origin from uh, non-EU states. So hopefully by now um, everyone's clear on the fact that when we bring in um, products of animal origin from a third country, um, they must uh, comply with EU import conditions. And in order for us to be able to ensure that these conditions are being uh, conformed to, we carry out uh, controls at our border control posts. There's two things, hopefully, um, you'll be able to take away from this uh, discussion here this afternoon. And that's, first of all, to get a sense of why do we impose these controls in the first place. And second, then, uh, following on from that, I'm literally going to talk you through what is involved in an SPS check or a sanitary and phytosanitary check so that you can actually get a better idea of what this whole process actually involves. So first off, the why. Why are we doing it? Well, at the end of the day, we need to make sure that the products of animal origin that come into the country and indeed into the EU do not pose any uh, risk to either public health or to animal health across our national uh, livestock, or indeed um, bring in anything that could cause a disease outbreak, for example, that could be harmful to the agri-food sector and indeed the economy. Just to give you a sense of um, the very close relationship between public health and animal health, we have some interesting statistics from the OIE, and they tell us um, that every, new, every year there are five new human diseases diagnosed across the world, and of those five, three of them come from an animal origin. So whilst we obviously think about public health and animal health as individual topics, it's very uh, important to understand how intricately linked they are as well. Just to put some context on that, bringing you back to 2008, you'll remember uh, when there was a dioxin crisis linked with pork meat um, and actually resulted in a ban or uh, a recall of pork products at that time. You'll see up there in the top right-hand corner those images of the empty shelves. Um, and this was because we could not assure the fact that this pork meat was safe for you and I to eat. And we needed to make sure that the produce on the shelves um, conformed with uh, the necessary public health standards. Uh, because of this contamination, which we know is potentially detrimental to human health, we had to recall it at that time. Bringing you back then even further to 2001, uh, we'll all remember those um, horrifying images as we watched as our UK colleagues um, battled a foot and mouth disease outbreak, which resulted in not only mass culling of flocks and herds in order to try and spread or to cull this or minimize the spread of the disease, but you'll remember at that time as well that we had to have in, uh, restrictions, not only on the movement of animals, but indeed of people as well. Um, what you might not have been aware of at that time as well was that we actually had an import ban of products of animal origin coming from the UK because we needed to make sure that no potentially contaminated product could come into contact with our national livestock here and facilitate spread of disease in Ireland. You'll remember um, the, the catastrophic outcome of this. It really uh, had a very negative uh, psychological damage on a whole generation of farmers which is still being felt today. And tied in with this, um, we have to consider how important the agri-food industry is in our wider economy. You can see here some nice stats that have been crunched over the last two years. We know that approximately 8% of our um, uh, employment is coming from the agri-food sector. And as well as that, about 7.8% of our gross national income um, is associated with this as well. We have a very buoyant export market in our agri-food sector. Um, and the reason I mention exports in the context of this talk is to remind everyone that we have such a successful export industry because Irish products are deemed to be a very high quality, both from an animal health and public health perspective. So they're very um, desirable on the world trading stage, if you will. But in order for us to be able to keep standards so high, it's absolutely imperative that we don't allow anything in which could potentially um, be detrimental to that animal and public health status. So they come as a yin and a yang to one another and it's important to, to look at that broader picture when we discuss this. Just to give you a sense of some of the figures that our uh, colleagues have um, produced on the back of some different disease outbreaks over the last 10, 15 years, you'll see there in particular in the middle in the UK, the foot and mouth disease outbreak 
was costing um, just under five billion pounds, okay? So the stakes are incredibly high when things go wrong. And hopefully with that, you can see just why this area of import controls is so imperative that it is carried out and the reasons that we um, follow the strict rules that we do. So moving on then, um, uh, as I said, we carry out these controls at an EU approved border control post, um, ensuring that these products conform with both animal health and public health um, conditions. These checks are mandatory on all products of animal origin uh, as they arrive into the EU territory. We do it in a harmonised way across all EU member states. So the way we are carrying out our controls here in Ireland is the same way that our French and our Dutch and our German colleagues, for example, are carrying out the same checks in their own countries. And they're overseen by um, a designated veterinarian or an official veterinarian uh, called the OV. Not to bamboozle people with uh, too much legislation, but this slide just is there really to give you um, only a small sense of the fact that this area is highly regulated in EU legislation. Um, the one up at 12 o'clock, Commission Decision 2007-275, I would draw your attention to as it lays down the list of uh, animals and animal products that need to be uh, presented and examined at a border control post when they come in from a third country. And just to give you a sense of what that uh, piece of legislation actually looks like, for the most part, it's actually just a series of tables, as you can see here. Three columns. In your left-hand column, you have a CN code. So, for example, 0201. It tells us, refers to meat of bovine animals, whether that be fresh or chilled. And in the qualification and explanation column over on the right-hand side, you'll see it gives you extra details on what the um, terms and conditions are, if you will, uh, associated with importing um, that product and uh, its veterinary checks. So, for example, in this instance, it's saying all, as in all bovine meat, fresher shield needs to be inspected at the border control post. As I mentioned, we carry out these harmonised import conditions. And a few things are very common um, across the board with this, and that is that the country sending the product has to be approved. And not only that, the individual establishment within that um, approved country also has to be approved. So this shows us that these um, establishments have met the relevant animal health and welfare, animal hygiene, uh, public health and animal health conditions to make them eligible to send things into the EU in the first place. As well as that, they have to show proof of a robust residue monitoring system. So this is where they can show us uh, in the EU that they are testing for things like contaminants, antimicrobials, uh, unwanted uh, microbiological criteria, etc. Again, ensuring that we know um, the, the high standard uh, of the produce that they're producing and that it's not harmful to public or animal health. These products must travel into the EU um, accompanied by a health certificate. And these are laid down in the legislation um, and are associated with the different types uh, of animal and animal products. Um, and it's a key piece of information that people will have to become familiar with um, as it is a mandatory requirement that these products travel with a health certificate. As well as that, um, the legislation lays down that these products must be appropriately packaged, labelled and transported on their way into the EU territory. So the journey really begins with what we call pre-notification. And this is definitely one of um, the pieces of information we really want to um, uh, put forth today that everybody is aware of this fact. So the person who is responsible for this load, um, in most instances, this is usually going to be a customs agent. They need to be registered with our system in the Department of Agriculture. And as well as that, they need to have access to the online um, management tool known as Traces. And through this system, they're going to pre-notify us that this consignment is coming in from a third country. There is a legal requirement that this pre-notification has to happen at least 24 hours before the consignment arrives into the EU territory. So it can be more in advance, if you so wish, but there is a legal requirement for a minimum of 24 hours uh, prior to its arrival. And pre-notification is given by um, your agent, or indeed if you're going to be doing it yourselves, um, you're going to fill out what's known as the CVED, uh, or Common Veterinary Entry Document. And by submitting this through the TRACES system, we get notification that this consignment is on its way to us. As well as that, we need to see other supporting documentation associated with this consignment at this point of time. 
So for example, you'll send us in a scanned copy of that original health certificate like I mentioned. The hard copy will have to travel with the consignment and we will look at the physical hard copy of it when the consignment arrives, but we're able to do a lot of uh, work in advance on a scanned copy um, to start off with. We'll also need other things such as invoices, commercial documents, um, packing lists, etc. So once we have all this documentation then, um, that allows us to start carrying out what we call the documentary check. And we have a requirement to do this on 100% of consignments. And during this process, we ensure that we're happy with those details on that CVED, that it's been correctly filled out, for example. We're going to interrogate that health certificate, make sure that it's the correct model for the type of product that's coming in. Again, making sure all the boxes have been correctly filled out. And we're going to cross-check with those other commercial documents that you've uh, supplied to us as well. So a huge amount of work can actually be done by us before the consignment ever arrives into the country. Um, and it's definitely one of the pieces we really want to get that message out that don't let um, issues arise because the paperwork is not correct. Um, correct paperwork really puts you on a really good footing to get your consignment processed efficiently. When it arrives then, um, what we do is an identity check. And again, there's a mandatory requirement that we do this on 100% of the consignments. And this is basically where we ensure that the product that you described to us in the document, uh, documentation that you supplied to us um, matches what actually physically arrives into the country. And we do two types of identity checks. Um, the most basic one is a seal check. So you can see here, this is just an example of a container which presented to our um, control facility. And our inspector here, he's looking at the seals. He's making sure that they're intact. Um, that there's been no sign of them being tampered with while they were um, in travelling. Uh, and as well as that, he's going to look at those seal numbers and make sure that they tally with what was declared on the documentation. If for some reason we feel it's more uh, prudent to carry out a fuller identity check, um, you will see that our uh, inspection has to occur now up at the actual control facility. In this instance, you'll see that uh, the seal check has already been performed and our inspectors have cracked open the seal and opened up the back of this container. At this point there, um, you can see that our inspector, he's looking at the um, official marks uh, identifying both the establishment and the country of origin. And again, he's going to do that correlation work between what he sees in front of him and what was declared on the documentation supplied. In certain instances, but not all instances, we also must carry out a physical check on the consignment. Um, and we have some legislation in place which basically breaks down the different types of animal products and gives us guidance on at what frequency should we be carrying out these physical checks. It's uh, Commission Decision 94360, it might be of interest for people to have a look at. But I would remind you as well, that at the end of the day, the official veterinarian is the one in charge of the border control post. So if he or she has some reason to want to have to take a greater look or a closer look at a consignment, uh, no matter what, they reserve that right to pull it in for a fuller physical check if they feel it's prudent to do so. Just to give you a sense of the types of products and the frequency of physical checks that we're performing, um, on current third country trade. You'll see there on the left hand column, um, this refers to mainly things like germinal products, so semen and embryos, um, as well as animal byproducts, the majority of which are not for human consumption, hay and straw, pet food, etc. And you see that they're coming in at a frequency of between 1 and 10% of those consignments will need a physical check. In the middle column then, you'll see um, at 20% frequency, uh, things like fresh and frozen fish and um, our meats, the majority of our meats come in, uh, as well as whole eggs, for example. And then in the higher risk category, we have things like poultry and poultry products, milk and milk products that are for human consumption, uh, honey, etc. And this isn't the extensive list, um, this is just to give you a flavour of it, so I would guide you back to 94360 if you want to see the entire uh, spectrum of the products listed within that piece of legislation. So what is this physical check piece all about? Um, probably the easiest way to, to describe it to you is, is to visually try and um, give you a sense of what happens. So we've seen the first two pictures on the top um, row already. We're in our border control facility, 
Our inspectors have carried out a seal check on this consignment and they have cracked the seal and opened the container and then they go ahead and they carry out their full identity check as I already described. Um, next thing they're going to do, you can see at this point they've removed a pallet of this particular consignment, they've popped it on a digital weighing scales um, and at this piece is where they're going to look at the declared weights versus the actual weights which again should all be tallying. Moving onwards then, the bottom left, you'll see we're now in the inspection room and our inspectors have cracked open these cartons. Um, in this case, I think it's a consignment of frozen chicken. Uh, and you can see that um, at this point, the inspector is going to be able to carry out what we call an organoleptic test. So it's using um, all of his senses to appreciate the viability of this consignment. So, for example, he's going to uh, use his sense of smell. For example, if there was a break in the cold chain for some reason, you might get a, a fetid smell because things are defrosting. He's going to use his um, thermometer to take thermograph readings to make sure that the cold chain has remained intact. Um, and they can go as far as to do things like uh, cooking and taste testing if they feel that it's appropriate either. You'll see there then in the middle, um, he's filling in all the results of his physical check. And at that point, he's going to make his uh, decision on the consignment. But in certain instances, as you see here, he's actually withheld two bags of this frozen chicken. And that's because he's going to submit it for sampling. So um, again, sampling is not mandatory on all consignments that we do physical checks on, but we do it in two different ways. So the first is done in a random way, and this is part of a broader, both national monitoring plan for residues, um, as well as an EU-wide one. And this is basically where it'll head off to the lab and be tested, but the consignment is not delayed from leaving the control facility. So yes, we take out our sample, that goes off, but there's no delay on the release of the consignment in that scenario. However, if there is an issue uh, identified with a specific country or indeed specific establishment within a country, for example, um, and something has flagged to us that these consignments could potentially be dangerous to either human or animal health, well then we will carry out our sampling, but in this scenario the consignment will be held at the border control facility until we have our results back and we're happy to release it into full circulation. So with that, you've really seen the scope of what exactly is involved in these checks. Um, and as I said, at this point, it's really up to our veterinarian to make a decision on the consignment. Uh, and there's really only one of two outcomes. The, it's either going to be cleared and released, or for some reason, um, the official veterinarian is unhappy with the consignment as it doesn't meet the requirements, and uh, he or she will reject it. And you can see that there's a variety of different reasons why a consignment might be rejected, uh, any point along the, the, the process from the documentary ID or physical uh, or indeed sampling stages. What I would just point you out um, here is that of the third country consignments that came into our border control facility back in 2017, um, the main reason something was rejected was because there was an issue with the, document, uh, the documentation. So they failed the documentary check. And again, that just feeds back to that piece that we really want to get out to you to be happy that you, you know what kind of documentation you need to be submitting um, so that you don't become part of that statistic. Finally, a very quick um, note on transit or land bridge. As our colleagues in Revenue have already told you, the consignment moves under a customs procedure. Um, from our side in agriculture, when it re-enters into the EU, we will have to carry out a documentary check, uh, verifying that consignment's origin and the uh, associated documentation as well will be looked at. In a certain uh, circumstances, and this is um, really in quite specific circumstances, for example, with frozen semen, um, the legislation actually lays down that these consignments must travel under a seal, so therefore we will be obliged to carry out a seal check on those as well when they re-enter into the EU. So finally then, uh, just to summarise what everyone needs to get their heads around and be prepared for, uh, firstly, there is a, a need for the person who's going to be responsible for the load to be registered with the Department of Agriculture and obviously to have access to the online uh, traces system. Know what kind of documentation you need to be uh, submitting to us, in particular that CVED uh, and the original health certificate. Pre-notification is a legal requirement, as I've mentioned already, a minimum of 24 hours in ad uh, advance of the consignment arriving. Uh, and when it does arrive, do be prepared for the fact that there will be a level of inspection carried out on these products, a documentary, an ID check as minimum, 
with physical checks and sampling as appropriate, depending on um, the specifics of the consignment. Any further queries, please uh, send them to our Brexit unit at brexit at agriculture.gov.ie. And I'll hand you over now to uh, my colleague Liam to discuss the plant side of things. Thank you.